Welcome everyone, in today's video we're covering Seracus, everybody's second favorite spider in RuneScape. I'll be covering everything you need to know about this lovable mid-tier boss as well as the related combat achievement. As always, if you like the vid, please like, subscribe, and drop a comment. As to why people kill this boss, it's mostly for the pet, which drops at a rate of 1 out of 3000. However, Iron Man in particular might be interested in the giant egg sacs, each containing 100 red spider eggs. This is dropped at a rate of 1 out of 20, or the cudgel, which is a crush weapon, which drops at a rate of 1 out of 384. While killing the boss, you'll notice Seracnus will also drop torn pages. Collecting four of each of these will let you complete the mini quest in search of knowledge, and that awards 10,000 XP to any skill of your choice over level 40. Seracnus also has two pet transmogs, the orange egg sac and the blue egg sac, but these aren't actually dropped by the boss. Instead, Seracnus drops grubby keys at a rate of 1 out of 15. Those can be used to loot a chest in the dungeon that has a 1 out of 25 chance to drop either transmog. Alternatively, main accounts can just buy the keys off the GE, but I thought that would be useful for anyone looking up Seracnus. There aren't any hard requirements to this boss, but I would recommend being base 70s in your combats before attempting this. Your range and magic level are used to boost your defense, though range is also used for the armor. 43 prayer is the minimum requirement, but 70 will give you access to piety. But if you want to get a little sweaty, 80 magic will give you access to death charge, allowing you to spec a little more often. Additionally, you will need either a knife or slash weapon to enter the boss's arena. However, using the Wilderness Diary Sword will ensure that you never fail slashing a spider web on your way there. For this boss, our goal will be maximizing magic defense while using a crush weapon. For the helmet slot, you're going to use a Neznot, upgrade to a face guard, or a slayer helm if you're on task. Turia will assign spiders, so you're welcome to do that and then come here. Alternatively, other Slayer Masters will assign Seragnus as a boss with the Like a Boss perk. The necklace is pretty straightforward. You're going to start at an Amulet of Power being your lowest option, going all the way up to a Torture. Your cape options are pretty much the same. We're starting at a Fire Cape and then moving on to the Inferno above that. If you don't have a Fire Cape for whatever reason, take whatever you want or a Myth Cape for the Crush bonus. For top and bottom, your best bet will be Dehyde, followed by Carols, which doesn't have negative attack bonuses, and then finally Fortified Missouri, which is a direct upgrade. If you want to focus a bit more on DPS at the cost of some defense, you can also opt for using Bandos Tacits. For our weapon, you can use anything from the Leaf Bladed Battle Axe, the Cudgel, the Bludgeon, Inquisitor's Mace, all the way up to a Scythe. For your offhand, it should be your best defender, but we'll be using a Blessing in our ammo slot as well. For gloves, either barrows or ferocious. As for boots, ideally dragon boots or prims, but we'll take whatever you have. For the ring, I personally use a light bearer, but if you don't have that, a berserker ring imbued will work just fine. As to your spec weapon, I personally would either stick to a crystal halberd or dragon claws, but the wiki does say that the warhammer or bandos god swords are actually better, so do with that what you please, but I'd personally just stick to a chally because I like the DPS. Now moving on to inventory, the exact ratio of potions to food will be a little dependent on your stats and your gear. With my setup, I took three prayer pots, one super divine combat, crystal hellbird, wilderness sword, house teleports, and runes for death charge with the remaining slots being sharks. If you don't have a pool of restoration in your POH, then bring a ring of dueling instead and heal up at the Ferox Enclave. Okay, now to actually find the boss. You've got four starting options to find Seracnus. The first, and probably the best, is to use the Xerix Talisman on the Glade option. Then, using your POH portal, the Spirit Tree Patch, or the Memoir slash Book of the Dead. I use the tree since I had one in my POH, so that's the path I'll be showing. But the Talisman probably is the quickest. So, from the dungeon, just run straight ahead past the spiders. Do note that you don't need the Wilderness Sword equipped to slash the webs. But if you do bring a knife or other weapon, then you'll have to use the knife on the webs or equip that slash weapon. Now we're on to boss mechanics. And technically speaking, there's four, but I've got my own. So four and a half is what we're going to call it. Anyways, first up is the attack zone. It's not actually required to kill the boss, but these marked tiles will be used for the combat achievement portion of the video. In short, stay in these tiles. Try not to go outside of them while fighting the boss, but we'll circle back around to this later. So don't worry about it. Now on for the action mechanics. First up is standard attack. Seracnus has both a range and melee attack. Seracnus will always melee you when in range and will only opt for range when there's a distance between you two. Then you have the healing strike. Seracnus' standard attack will heal on successful hits if you're not praying. This is indicated by a magenta heal splat. She heals five for every successful melee attack and 10 for every successful ranged attack, regardless of how much damage she actually deals, including zeros. 
Sticky webs. Every four standard attacks, Rachnus will screech out, shoot out a sticky web that leaves the player bound for, I don't know, roughly three seconds before moving a short distance away, and then re-attack the player. So once you get bound, or you see the hiss, swap to range, then run back to the boss, for a melee, you can avoid the damage doing that. All right, so at 66% health, and then at 33% health, Seracnus will call two summons. One will be a magic with then a max hit of 11, and a melee spider with a max hit of 13. Both of them have 30 health. Higher level players tend to ignore these in favor of just continuing to attack the boss, but lower level players may want to focus their attention specifically on the mage spider to avoid taking lots of damage, and generally in either case you're going to be ignoring the melee one since you're praying most of the time. As for the combat achievements, we need to kill her 10 and 25 times, kill her with a crush weapon, kill her without using a range attack twice in a row, and kill her without taking any damage, which means praying properly. Our full fight will demonstrate all of this. Now, the kill zone with the marked tiles that I showed earlier is important to help ensure she doesn't have time to use two range attacks in a row. So stay inside this zone. But more than likely, you won't get this one in the first kill of the trip due to her webbing mechanic. So we'll probably get it on the second KC of the trip. All right, and here we are for the official kill. So I'm just healing up, getting ready to repot. As you can see, we got a couple of them the last kill, but didn't get all of them. So anyways, once you're healed up, make sure you're in this zone ready for the boss. It usually sends out one attack followed by the hiss or hiss right away, as you can see. So if you're not in that zone that we have marked, the boss will have time to do two hits of range on you. So that's why we have this zone marked. The only thing that might give you trouble as you do this is if the boss runs diagonally instead of left to right, that can cause you to be delayed just enough to have two attacks. But generally speaking, it'll go left to right, up or down, and you'll have plenty of time to get over to the boss before it launches a second range attack. So as you can see, we freeze, unfreeze, go back to hitting. Looks like we're coming up on 66 eventually if we stop hitting zeros or low numbers. All right, so here we have these guys. Now, because we're doing the challenge, we need to be quick getting over to the boss, which is why we're just going to ignore them. If you have lower HP, it might be more beneficial to wait until Seracnus is next to the major. So for example, if you were low level and worried about the amount of damage you're taking, you'd want to come over and start attacking the major now before going back to the boss. But I'm high enough level, doesn't really matter. Ooh, that was a nice Chally spec. Got another hiss. Go range. And as soon as you see those missiles come out, you're actually fine to go back praying against the boss. You don't have to wait until it actually hits you. So if you find yourself getting hit more with range than you'd like, just try swapping your prayers a little bit quicker and you should be all right. But that is the combat achievements. All right, now it's time for perhaps what is my favorite way to kill this boss. Definitely by far the laziest way. But this setup is basically just full Justice Shar and a Bulwark. I have a Light Bear and a Blood Fury to help extend trips and spec more often. But noticeably speaking, the kills are basically much slower, but with a Blood Fury, I mean, you can stay almost infinitely. It's actually really awesome. The only thing about this is because you're in melee gear, you actually will take a lot more damage from the Major, so you probably will have to specifically focus on killing that than going back to the boss. But we're so bulky, and with the Blood Fury healing us so much, it's, it's honestly awesome. Now, the cool thing about the Bulwark is the spec is an AoE attack, so if you line everything up properly, you'll be able to hit Seracnus and attack both the Spiderlings at the same time. And this thing has a max hit of over 30, at least, you know, once you're, I don't know when, but 99, definitely. So it's easy and frequent to one-shot both Spiderlings with a spec attack, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, um, I mean, that's uh, this is the uh, Justy Bulwark method if you're interested in lazy killing this thing. I don't know. It's perfect for if you're binge watching Netflix studying or just doing, you know, whatever. So I'll leave this here. Do with it what you will. Kills per hour is probably less than using a bludgeon. I didn't do like a full full test with it where I was actually paying attention. Um, I will say kills probably feel about half speed, but I mean, you can just stay here forever without really paying attention. It's it's pretty cool. Thanks for watching, everyone. The best part about Seracnus is that it's easy, which means you'll be back to runecrafting in no time at all. Anyways, until next time, guys.